Hello everyone. Welcome to today's online class from finite1lab.com. Today we will be discussing sample questions of Aruba Certified Switching Professional Exam. In this session today, you will understand few concepts related to Aruba Wired Solutions. Before I move on, let me introduce the finite1lab.com. finite1lab.com is the top IT training and certification exam brand in China. Hong Kong, Taiwan, and Singapore. Our mission at Finite One Lab is to provide our clients with exceptional exam preparation experience for certifications in Cisco, Huawei, Aruba, Juniper, Palo Alto, and Fortinet exam tracks. Today we will be covering few topics such as configuring wired network solutions, troubleshooting, management monitoring and optimization of Aruba switching solutions and planning of Aruba wired solutions from Aruba certified switching professional exam objectives. Let me briefly go through each one of them. Under configuring wired solutions, topics related to configuration of layer 2 and layer 3 functions and features related to security, key voice and how to build configuration based on customer requirement are included. Then troubleshooting includes how to identify a network failure, how to determine implications on network state due to the remediation actions taken, and how to determine the cause of performance problems. Management monitoring and optimization covers the configuration management and how to analyze data that represents the operational state of a network. Determining an appropriate implementation plan based on the design no customer requirement is covered under planning. Okay, let's look at the sample questions under configuring wired network solutions. What are the best practices when implementing VSX on AOS X CX switches? We have to select two answers. Question is about the best practices of VSX configuration on AOS CX switches. VSX stands for Virtual Switching Extension, which is a virtualization technology to cluster Aruba AOS CX switches. Let's look at the technical white paper that provides information regarding best practices. This is the VSX uh, configuration technical white paper for best practices. You can see here the best practices. Let me show you them. So there are uh, best practices for various uh, segments now for the uh, system Mac so they recommend to configure the system Mac manually without keeping the default uh, as blank because it will uh, help you to uh, replace the switch uh, without depending on the Mac changes so then I uh, will go down to check about the other best practices. So the same firmware release. And this uh, interswitch link, the, the recommended bandwidths are, you know, at least 240G connections. 240G links are recommended at least 240G, then 50 or 100. So this is the recommended uh, uh, best practices for the interswitch links and best practices for LACP timers actually keep the default uh, long timer and MTUs so MTU they recommend to go with uh, supporting the jumbo frames so MTU will be 9198 9, bytes and about the keep alive link so the keep alive link has to be uh, independent of the other uh, data paths so they recommend to keep a dedicated layer 3 uh, link between these two switches and it has to be in a dedicated VRF also uh, without depending on the data plane and for the inter switch link timers uh, keep the default timers so VLAN configuration uh, best practice is to configure uh, with the VSX sync command so it will the secondary uh, will get the VLAN configuration synced with the primary. Now let's look at the 
answers. Option A. The Keep Alive connection should use a direct layer 3 connection. Yes, Keep Alive is a layer 3 direct connection between two switches. It is correct. Just while ago you have seen uh, that in the technical white, white paper. Option B. Timers should be left at their default values. You have seen that white, white paper says to keep the default timer. So this is also correct. Option C. The ISL lag should use at least 10 GB links or faster. ISL links should be at least 40 GB or more. So this is wrong. Option D. The ISL lag should use the default MTU size. ISL lag should support jumbo frames. So the default MTU size need to be changed. This is wrong. Option E. The default system MAC addresses should be used. Technical guide says not to use default system MAC and manually configure it because configuring it manually will remove the dependency on physical hardware MAC address. So it will be helpful when replacing hardware during a failure. So this is wrong. Therefore correct answers are option A and B. Take a look at the next question under configuring wired network solutions. An administrator is managing a VSX pair of AOSCX switches. An administrator configures the following on the primary AOSCX switch. So under config modes, VLAN 100. Then under VLAN 100 context, uh, VSX-sync command is used. So what is correct if the administrator executes VLAN 200 on the secondary AOSCX switch. Need to understand the functionality of VSX-sync command. Uh, look at the previous technical white paper on VSX. When you create VLANs on the primary switch with VSX-sync command under VLAN context, secondary switch will get synchronized with those VLAN configuration. Now in this question, VLAN 200 was configured in secondary switch. This is valid scenario and VLAN 200 will be there in the secondary switch. Since VLAN 200 was not configured in primary, it won't be there. So there is no synchronization for VLAN 200 for secondary because same configuration item that is VLAN 200 is not configured in primary with VSX-sync. So then what will happen is primary switch will not have VLAN 200 but secondary switch will have VLAN 200. Let me extend the same scenario to a different outcome. Suppose VLAN 200 is configured in secondary with name of employees and after that primary switch is configured with VLAN 200 with VSX sync but with name of let's say corporate. Now in this case same configuration item which is VLAN 200 is created in primary with VSX sync and because of that it can override the name of the VLAN 200 configured in secondary. So result would be VLAN 200 name in secondary will become corporate. I think now the answer is straightforward because you have understood what's happening with VSX sync command. We'll go through answers. Option A. The primary switch will erase VLAN 200 from the VSX pair. No, it won't happen because there is no same configuration item present in primary with VSX sync. And primary cannot do any override on VLAN 200. So this is not correct. Option B. The VLAN is created on both the primary and secondary switches. No, VLAN created in secondary won't replicate in primary. So this is, this is wrong. Option C. The VLAN is only created on the secondary switch. Yes, VLAN 200 will be created in the secondary switch and it is a valid scenario. Option D, the operation is not allowed by the switch and a CLI error is displayed. No, it is allowed and a valid scenario. This is wrong. So correct answer is option C. Okay, 
we'll move on to the next question under troubleshooting examine the configuration of core 1 and core 2 AOC X switches configured as a VSX stack when using the show VSX status command the two switches fail to connect and successfully synchronize what should the administrator to administrator do to fix this issue okay now we'll go through these uh, configs under core 1 uh, they are defining interface lag 256 and it's a uh, uh, no routing means it's a switch switch port and it's for layer 2 lag so VLAN trunk allowed all all the VLANs are allowed in that trunk LACP mode active so they are these are common configurations under both core 1 and core 2 so interface 1 slash 1 slash 46 and 47 they are part of lag 256 so they are member of this uh, lag 256 uh, most probably they are the interswitch links so under VSX in core 1 uh, so that is the interswitch link lag 256 so this will define the interswitch uh, links with lag 256 and VSX sync VSX global command is there under core 1 uh, so that is not there in the core 2 so these are the configurations done on the uh, two switches now we'll go through the answers option a define the VSX roles on the two switches VSX primary and secondary roles are not configured which is mandatory so this looks correct option B enable active active forwarding on the two switches enabling active 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 forwarding won't affect this synchronization. Even to make the active active forwarding to work, first of all, we have to uh, make them connect successfully and synchronize. This is wrong. Option C define a larger MTU on the ISL link of the two switches. Larger MTU is a best practice to follow to allow jumbo frames, but it is not critical for this current failure. This is wrong. Option D Create a keep alive connection between the two switches. Keep alive connection is an important element but it will be crucial when the ISL links are down. We do not know whether it was set up or not because it was not shown in the config output. But it is clear that device roles are missing under VSX configuration. So option D would be wrong. So the correct answer is option A. Look at the next question under troubleshooting. A network administrator is tasked to set up BGP in the company's network. The administrator is defining an eBGP peering between an AOS CX switch and a directly connected service provider. The administrator has configured the following on the AOS CX switch. However, when using the show BGP all summary command, the state does not display established for the EBGP peer. What must the administrator configure to fix this issue? Okay, let's uh, look at the example, the, the configuration done and uh, that is shown here. Let's analyze the BGP configuration. So interface loopback 0 is configured and its IP 10.1.1.1 slash 32 is done and interface 1.1.1 uh, is the routed interface which is having 192, 168.1.2 is assigned with slash 30 so 1.1 is a directly connected neighbor which is 1.1 with the a point to point should be a point to point link and router BGP 64500 under that AS number so neighbor is defined neighbor 192, 168.1.1 with remote AS 64511 that is eBGP neighbor with a different AS number this is external BGP and BGP router ID is uh, defined as 192.168.1.2 that is the same interface IP and under address family is defined but under address family uh, I can see neighbor is not activated there is no neighbor activation under address family before we go through the answers let me uh, show you some configuration example so look at this uh, configuration example you can see here uh, let's look at this router A and this switch so this is a 
uh, external BGP 64512 and 6400 so you can see this routers configuration and even uh, let's look at this uh, switch configuration so neighbor is defined 102.12 that is the EBGP neighbor and under, under address family IPv4 unicast these neighbors are activated this particular 10.255.102.12 is activated this command is required under address family so I think the answer is straightforward now so option A you can see it has the neighbor activation command so this looks correct option B there is no such enable command under BGP so this is not a valid command so option B is wrong option C since the neighbor IP and this router interface are in slash 30 subnet they are point to point no need of update source loopback IP this could be useful in IBGP scenario but that is not the case here so this will not solve the problem so this is not correct option D EBGP multi hop would be useful in cases where EBGP neighbors are reachable through one or more routers in between other scenarios uh, would be when using the loopback IP as the neighbor's IP since loopback IP is not on the directly connected link so this command has to be used but in this question it is not required as they are directly connected neighbors via slash 30 subnet so this is not correct so correct answer is option A next question is from management monitoring and optimization an administrator will be deploying NetEdit to manage an Aruba solution. What does NetEdit support? Let's understand what is NetEdit. Look at the NetEdit datasheet. Aruba NetEdit is a software tool that supports IT teams to orchestrate the configuration of multiple AOS CX switches with automation and analytics to ensure deployments are consistent and free of errors. It will provide a user-friendly CLI-like interface so that user can do network-wide changes, end-to-end -end service rollouts consistently. This is deployed as a VM, for example on uh, VMware ESXi. Once the user enters network subnet details into NetEdit, it can automatically discover and import configuration files for each Aruba CX switch. NetEdit automatically discovers uh, new network infrastructure devices using the LLDP uh, using REST APIs for Aruba CX switches and SNMP for Aruba wireless and third party devices ok let's uh, go through answers one by one option A tracks configuration and hardware information yes NetEdit has full audit trail so it can track configuration and hardware information this looks correct option B uh, the support for Aruba supplied security updates Aruba does not provide OS security updates to NetEdit VM so this is wrong option C can be purchased as a VM and or hardware appliance can be purchased as a VM only but not as a hardware appliance so this is wrong option D manages AOS CX switches and Aruba gateways it can manage AOS CX switches but not the Aruba gateways so this is not correct correct answer is option A let's move on to the next question under management monitoring and optimization a network engineer is using NetEdit to manage AOS CX switches the engineer notices that a lot of third party wipe phones are showing up in the NetEdit topology the engineer deletes these but they automatically rediscovered by NetEdit and added back in. What should the administrator do to solve this problem? This is related to discovery of third party devices by NetEdit. Just now we went through NetEdit in detail. Third party devices are discovered by NetEdit via SNMP, LLDP. Uh, look at the datasheet. Question says even after deleting the VoIP phones from topology, NetEdit added them again automatically. So it does this via LLDP because SNMP is not intentionally configured to scan them from NetEdit. This happens via AOS CX switches and uh, using LLDP it is able to discover the connected VoIP phones. 
So we have to disturb this LLDP discovery. Let's look at the answers. Option A. Disable SSH access on all VoIP phones. This is not correct as there is no SSH credential sharing with NetEdit of VoIP phones. Option B. Disable the RESTful API on all the VoIP phones. There is no RESTful API integration between VoIP phones and NetEdit. This is wrong. Option C. Disable LLDP globally on the AOS CX switches where phones are connected. This looks correct because this action will disturb the LLDP discovery of IP phones by AOS CX switches. Option D. Change the VoIP phone SNMP community string to something unknown by NetEdit. Uh, there is no SNMP community configured to discover VoIP phones. Uh, this is wrong. Therefore, correct answer is option C. Next question is under planning wired network solutions. An administrator wants to implement a virtual switching technology that implements a single control plane solution. Which AOS CX switches would meet this criteria? It is about virtual switching technologies. Aruba has two virtual switching technologies, VSF and VSX. VSF stands for Virtual Switching Framework and VSX stands for Virtual Switching Extension. Let me show you their architectures. You can see here how the management, control, routing and data planes are working in both technologies. In VSF, here it shows two switches but support up to 8 or 10 switches in a stack based on the switch model. Their management, control, routing and data planes are shared. Once the VSF stack is formed, you will see all the ports of the stack members. So when you log in. So it's a single logical switch. Comparatively in VSX, management, control, routing planes are synchronized instead of sharing. Only data plane is shared. So control planes are separate but synchronized. So this is a dual control plane technology because only two switches support in a VSX stack. Now it is clear that VSF provides single control plane. So let's find the switch models that support these two technologies. So for the Aruba VSF, uh, 6200 is supporting. 6200, AOSCX 6200, then 6300 series, it supports VSF. Uh, then for the VSX, uh, 6400, which is a posage, 6400 series, then 8300, data center switch series, then 8400, high end uh, cosage and even uh, Aruba AOCX 10,000 that is with the uh, uh, stateful firewall so that uh, switch also supporting VSX so all these series are supporting VSX and 6200 and 6300 support VSF let's look at the answers now option A all AOS CX switching platforms. This is not correct because some of the AOS CX switches support VSF and some support VSX. Option B AOS CX 6300 and 6400 switches. 6300 supports VSF but 6400 supports VSX that has dual control plane not the single control plane so this is not correct. Option C 6300 switches support VSF, that is single control plane. It looks correct. Option D, 6300 supports VSF and 6400 and 8300 supports VSX. So this is not correct. So correct answer is option C. We have reached the final question under planning wired network solutions. A company has just purchased AOS CX switches. The company has a free and open source AAA solution. The company wants to implement access control on the Ethernet ports of the AOS CX switches. Which security feature 
can the company implement given the equipment that they are using. Question is about the security features that can be applied on AI CX switches using third party AAA server. Let's go through answers one by one and understand. Option A Port based tunneling. This shows what happens in port based tunneling. Switch port can be individually configured to create a single tunnel to the mobility controller. However, at the mobility controller, each tunnel node port is seen as separate tunnel to provide some provide more granular visibility as each tunnel has a unique GRE key. By tunneling traffic to the mobility controller in port based tunneling, authentication and network policies are applied and enforced at the controller side for tunnel wide traffic. So this is this requires a Aruba controller but question doesn't say anything as such. Also, port-based tunneling was available with A or S switches. This looks wrong. Option B. Downloadable user roles. In case of downloadable user roles, the switch doesn't need the user role defined on the switch. Downloadable user roles only work with ClearPass server, not third-party authentication server. When a device connects and authenticates successfully, the switch will download the user role to the switch and the switch will apply it to the device so this is not correct because you need a clear pass server for this option c device fingerprinting device fingerprinting is examining protocol information from the device like dhcp and http payload information and using this information to identify additional information about the device like the product operating system and other information in some scenarios, it is needed to enhance security of 802.1x authentication by combining it with the fingerprinting feature like that supported by ClearPass, which can help identify the hardware, for example, a security camera versus an Apple iPhone or operating system used by the device. So in Aruba solutions, fingerprinting is done by ClearPass. In this question, ClearPass is not there. So instead open AAA service there. So this is not correct. Option D, local user roles. Local user role allows to use a third party AAA server. Local user roles are defined on the switch. When a device connects and authenticates successfully, a user role, that is vendor specific attribute is passed to the switch. Then the switch will apply that user role to the device. So this is correct. So the correct answer is option D. That concludes our training for today. I hope you found this overview of Aruba Certified Switching Professional exam topics helpful. We have discussed sample questions covering the areas such as configuring wired network solutions, troubleshooting, management monitoring and optimization, and planning wired network solutions. Be sure to check out 591lab.com for more online courses, practice exams and training materials to continue your certification preparation. You can also visit www.591cert.com to learn more about our full suite of services. If you have any questions or concerns, please don't hesitate to contact us. Thanks for joining today's class and I wish you the best of luck on your certification journey. Have a great day.